if the lake is entirely on your property, you know, you buy a hundred acres and you got your house, you got a lake there, that's a private lake. Because remember exclusion, that neighbor <coughs> could not walk over because they're actually trespassing on your land. So in situations like that, yeah, that would extremely be a private lake. But if you're dealing with something where you're telling me you've got a question that looks something like this, here's a lake and here's all these lots that share that lake, could you buy that? It would be really hard because see the ownership may go like this. It's divided, yeah. Now, even though you own that, here's something else and it's really not a big issue, but we'll talk about it. There is what they call a cross easement or a cross use agreement. So that this guy here doesn't just swim in this area. He will have a cross easement or cross easement agreement with all these people as they all will. So if he wants to swim over here, he can swim over here and swim over here. Even though he owns a portion of it, it's an undivisible portion. Meaning I can, I own that little wedge, but I, I may own this wedge. This guy owns that wedge, that guy owns that wedge and like that. But I get, we have an agreement that says I can use your wedge and you can use mine so that I can run my boat in the whole lake or I can swim in the whole lake or anything like that. That would be a cross use agreement for people that have littoral rights on their lake. Now, we talked about real property. The biggest thing to remember is we are also going to discuss this other term called personal property. And the term that you hear in your book, another sight word, is chattel. Chattel. That is typically what most attorneys would call this. Chattel means personal property. And there are several different types of personal property. The first one I want to talk about are plants. Now there's a section in your book about manufactured housing. Once again, there's nothing on the exam about it, nothing on my exam, nothing on the state exam to my knowledge. So who cares? All right. Um, that's the biggest thing to remember about manufactured or factory built or modular homes. Sometimes mobile homes are considered personal property and that you have a hard time getting a loan for somebody that wants to buy a mobile home. Now they can make it that if it's like on a foundation or it's permanently hooked up to a septic in a well. So they can be, but sometimes mobile homes are just considered personal property and not real property. The first one I wanna talk about is a plant. There are two types of plants. The first type of plant is called the fructus industrialis. And I'm not even going to embarrass myself by trying to write that on the screen because it's in your book. Fructus industrialis. These are the industrial fruits, the industrial fruits. The sight word that they do love to use is called an implement. and implement. These are crops, corn, oats, soybean, wheat, tobacco, barley, hay, hops, marijuana, for those states that are in that, I, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that would be considered an implement. These are treated like personal property. Meaning that when a farmer sells his farm, the corn that he has planted is an implement. It would go with the farmer. He would come back and pick or harvest the corn or the soybeans or the oats or whatever, and it would go with him 
because it is treated like personal property. It would be no different than a microwave or his couch or his TV, his corn, his soybeans, all of that. That is the fructus industrialis. The second type of plant is called the fructus naturalis or the naturally occurring plants like the oak tree out back, the evergreen tree, the hedges in front of the house. Those are considered real property as you already understand because what is inside of real property? Land, remember? And I told you when I defined land, I said land is the physical dirt and earth and all of the naturally occurring plants that are on it. And then real property included land plus improvements plus the rights. So the naturally occurring are treated like real property. You would never write a purchase agreement that says my client wants to buy 12 Smith Street and the oak tree out back because the oak tree would be considered in the real property, which I told you is what our purchase agreement actually mentions. We would be buying the real property located at 12 Smith Street. The word real property would encompass the naturally occurring plants. Even though we technically plant it, I, you know, roses don't naturally occur out of nature. Somebody planted it. The concept here is, it was planted once as opposed to an implement is planted on an annual basis. Crops are planted annually. And that's typically the slight difference between naturally and industrially. Corn, you don't get a field of corn just pop up without planting it, okay? So here's the question to you guys. What about a vineyard or an apple orchard, pumpkin patch, Christmas tree farms? All of these items appear to be crops, but the fact is they are, those are often planted to be exactly what they are, a vineyard. So it would be treated like real property. Apple orchards are treated like real property. You certainly wouldn't want to buy a vineyard, a hundred acre vineyard, and the owner come back at harvest time and go, well, they're my grapes, I'm taking them. No, that's why I bought it was it as a vineyard. Now, hopefully you guys would have this discussion if you get to the point where you're selling a vineyard or an apple orchard or a pumpkin patch, there would be some negotiation, but literally there is precedent as to which one is which. Fructus industrialis are personal property and fructus naturalis are, are real property. Those are the two types of plants. You can go back and forth between these two types of items. We've got real property, we've got personal property. I can go from personal property into real property through this term called annexation. Annexation means to bring in or to add to. So I'm going to bring in the personal property into the real property. I bought a bunch of gravel, a bunch of sand, and I'm gonna add some water and some cement, and I'm going to make a, pour it into a concrete walkway. That grant, grant, that gravel and sand, which combined is grand, that apparently in my head, gravel and sand are personal property. Dump truck drives by, dumps it on your driveway, it's sitting there, that's personal property. You mix it up, pour it into a sidewalk from your front porch to your driveway, you now have a piece of real property, you have annexed it in. You can go the other way 
from real property to personal property through severance. You know, when you cut something off, you sever it. You've got an oak tree out back. That is real property. You get a wild hair one day, you grab the chainsaw, you go out and you cut the tree down and cut it into log for firewood. You stack the firewood at the back of your house. That firewood is now personal property. You have severed it from your real property and made it personal by making it and splitting it into firewood. So we can literally go back and forth between personal and real and real and personal. Matter of fact, this is what you are going to negotiate half of the time that you start negotiating stuff. Literally things like <clears throat> washers and dryers, you consider that personal property, right? Suppose your buyer says, we want to buy the house, but we want the washer and dryer to stay. So you write an offer, here's our offer, that includes the washer and dryer. All you're really doing is annexing that personal property of washer and dryer into the real property and making an offer on that real property. The same thing is true the other way. You can sever stuff. I had a, a, a case years ago. Actually, I believe if I think back, it was like one of my very first listings in Speedway. There was a lady uh, that had a house and she wanted to exclude the rose bush on the southeast corner of her house. Typically, the rose bush would be real property. All right, she had planted it, it had grown up over the years but it was like some kind of award-winning rose. She took it to some flower show and she wanted to keep the rose bush. So we actually, in the listing agreement, had to sever that real property and say specifically that the pink rose bush at the southeast corner of the house is not included in the sale and will be removed by the seller at the day of closing. So we severed the real property into personal and literally she had one of those damn trucks that come in and just whoosh, scooped all the dirt and took it with her. Now, she did a heck of a good job. She put dirt back in, she sodded it, put grass, uh, straw over the top and all of that. But that is a case of we actually severed real property into personal. Okay, now there are some things that appear to be personal, but are truly real property. They are called a fixture. Hence the word, a light fixture. It is a chandelier that is hanging in the foyer and you think it looks personal, but because of the way that it's attached, it is actually a uh, real property. And there are some different ways to test if that property is either real or personal, okay? So the first question or the first test, and you guys all get to play along. I know you look excited today. Microwave, how many think it's real? Thumbs up. How many think it's personal? How many don't care? <laughs> the question is, yes, <clears throat> it, it is. <clears throat> it's both, or it could be both. Excuse me. <clears throat> Way too early. Picked the wrong day to quit sniffing blue. What was that, an airplane? Movie airplane. Picked the wrong day to quit sniffing blue. Is the microwave sitting on the counter that you can pick up and carry with you? That is personal property. Or is the microwave attached above the stove so that it gives light 
and the fan, and it is bolted into the cabinetry. This one may be real. This one is personal. So one of the common methods is, can you move it? If I can move it, it's personal. If I can't move it, it's real. Now, when I say can't move it, obviously I can move anything with a big enough sledgehammer. They are usually talking about with ease, all right? My wife and I went out walking yesterday and she goes, hey, I wanna walk down and see this tree that's in Nashville that's got a carving in it. And she said, is it close enough to walk? And I told her, I said, anything's close enough to walk if you have enough time. The question is, do we wanna spend enough time? Do we wanna walk five hours? So anything could be movable given a sledgehammer, but that's not what they're really talking about something that's bolted in and wired in it is affixed in such a manner that makes it real so the next question would be refrigerators real or personal well you obviously see we're going with this game if we have a personal that is sitting out in the garage and it's holding my beer in it and i can literally just roll it up in the back of the u-haul that could be a personal property but if it's one of those sub zeros where you've got all these cabinets and one of those is a refrigerator and you would definitely notice it being missing. In this particular case, this one could be real. This one's personal. So the second test is how is it used in a system? If it's used in a system that where it's obviously going to be a missing component, then it's real property and would stay with the house. There's a couple other that you agree on in there. Um, one deals with like the relationship and that has to do mainly with landlord and tenant stuff. A good example would be a swing set. Hey, I put the swing set in for my kids. My kids are going with me, so is the swing set even though it could potentially have been dug into the ground and I stuck the legs in. Um, you know, all these new kids now have these big four by four wooden post kind of swing sets. When I was growing up, we just had those little metal A-frames. You could swing on them, pull the whole damn thing over. That's, you know, I was big as a child too. Sit in it, the whole frame bends. The last one and the best one, in my opinion, the best way to determine which one it is, what do you guys agree on? Because literally it doesn't matter what it is, if you guys agree that it's the other. And we go back to the washer and dryer. If I ask for it to stay, even though it's typically personal property and the seller says, I will leave it for you, then it becomes real property. If you say, I want that ceiling fan to be gone because it's ugly as hell. And the seller says, I am taking that with me because my wife loves that. Then it doesn't matter that it's wired to the ceiling and bolted on. You both agree it's personal and it's gone. So the best one, if you ever have any kind of a uh, concern, would be what do you guys agree that it is? Because it can be either one of them that you need it to be. So that is what a fixture. Had a lawsuit several years ago. Guy forgot to, couldn't make the final walkthrough. We closed, he went back and called me and said, hey dude, they stole every light bulb in the house. They took every light bulb with them. What do I do? I'm like, I would suggest you go buy light bulbs. He actually wanted to sue them for the light bulbs. And to my knowledge, he actually did sue them. I was not involved in that lawsuit because my agency had terminated and I was not certainly going to drive up to Noblesville, Indiana to watch him go through a small claims court. 
we would have caught that if he listened to his counsel that said, let's go do a final walkthrough. And we'll talk all about final walkthroughs at a later date. All right.